Have you ever had a case where entire subnet is down only because someone used manually configured IP on their computer and that IP matched the gateway IP address? That happened to me. Back in the days, one of the computers in my subnet brought down the entire subnet. And when we found it, turns out the user put the IP address manually and that IP address was the same IP address as our gateway for that subnet. So next day, I figured how to block these kind of things and I'm gonna show you how to do it today. But before we start, my name is David Godivadze. I'm business IT consultant from New York. If you have any need to avoid or mitigate expensive downtimes in your business, reach out to me. Now let's work on the blocking the manually configured IP addresses on our subnets because we don't want anyone to do man in the middle attack or put down the entire subnet because they use the wrong IP address. The way it works is that there is a function protocol, I would say, dynamic ARP inspection. So what it does, it checks the ARPs and the sees make sure that ARP match the MAC address from the table of the DHCP snooping. So if you watched my previous video right before this one, we configured DHCP snooping and I'm not going to configure that again today. Uh, I'm gonna put the video right here, but if not, uh, I'm gonna show you what's the configuration here. So this is how you configure DHCP snooping. It's configured for VLAN 1. We excluded extra information for back compatibility on the older DHCP servers. This is actually global, global enabled DHCP snooping. And then this is trusting the interface making sure that um, we have legit DHCP here, so we trust this interface. Now, if you don't know what the DHCP snooping is, you better watch this video again. Now, all we need to do is enable dynamic ARP inspection and trust the port. Now, how the dynamic ARP inspection works? It uses the DHCP snooping binding table, and I'm gonna show you what table I'm talking about now. Show IP DHCP snooping binding. So this is the table, and what dynamic ARP inspection does is when IP and MAC address comes on the interface, the switch checks if the IP match the MAC address from this table, and if not, it just drops it. It's not allowing. So that's awesome because only the IP provided by the DHCP server is allowed on the network, which is very cool because sometimes you need to change the subnet. Even if there is no need for the security you know, risk mitigation, sometimes when you need to change the subnet and not everyone is converting to the new subnet because turns out help the support change the IP addresses to manual configured because they want to avoid using DHCP for, I don't know, many reasons. Maybe DHCP server is not working and you're not the owner of the DSP. Who cares, right? And you're all, you don't want that because manually configured IPs on a host is a really bad idea, really not best practice. And it gives so much headache in the future that you want to avoid that unless that is the server, the actual server. We don't want to use manually configured IPs on printers, uh, security surveillance cameras or computers or phones on anything other than the servers. On the servers, that's okay. On anything else, no, not good. Maybe some do Industrial machines as well can use statically configured IP, manually configured IP, I should say, because IP can still be static and assigned by DHCP. So that's why I'm saying manually configured IP, and I mean going inside the Windows settings or Linux or Mac, doesn't matter, and putting the IP address manually, not using DHCP client. So we have a table here, and this table is propagated by the DHCP packets. When computer requests the IP address and DHCP response, that information is grabbed by the switch and put it in the table. So switch now knows that uh, this MAC address is for this IP address. So if any other MAC address comes with this IP address, it won't work. Or if any I different IP address, or if the same IP address comes with a different MAC address, it still won't work. So let me enable dynamic ARP inspection first, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First, we need to trust the interface because uplink interface is statically configured IP address, let's say firewall, gateway, next up, doesn't matter. And dynamic ARP inspection will block that unless we trust the interface. The way we trust it is the absolutely the same as we trust on DHCP snooping. So we go into the interface, IP, ARP, inspection, and trust. Now, since this is trust, trusted now, now we can, now we can enable the, the dynamic ARP inspection globally. And for that, we do IP, ARP, inspection, and we say on which VLAN we want to enable, just like on a DHCP snooping. One. 
Now, now if I go into my Windows, this is the this computer. You see the IP address? That's the same IP address here, right? It's connected to the Ethernet uh, fast Ethernet zero slash one. Okay, it has this MAC address, and now I'm going to change the IP address. I'll configure the IP address manually, and you'll see how it will start blocking. Let's use twelve thirty four. 56. Now, if I use 104 again, it will work for some time until this association is still in the table. But once once this is gone, based on the DSP list timeout, then it, it's, it will stop working. So we are going to try to use completely different IP address because, you know, we want to block any IP that is not provided by DHP server. So basically, if you implement that, any of the IP on the network will be visible from the DHP server and you know for sure that there are no new extra IPs because of help desk or service desk or the advanced user who has the admin rights. You will make sure that the only IPs you have on the subnet is from the DHP server, which is kind of cool, you know, because that's a control. Now, let me clear the login here and let's run the ping. I'm going to ping uh, switch. This is switch, I, switch IP address. Can I change the font size? No, I can't. I'm pinging the IP address of this switch, this IP address. This is what am I pinging. And once I click the OK button here, it will stop pinging because dynamic ARP inspection will block this. And we lost the connection to the switch because we were connected to the through the SSH. Now let's go connect through the console and see what's going on. Yes, switch is yelling that I'm blocking the IP address from the uh, switch, but actually, you know what? Yeah, 105. You see, we are blocking this IP address. This is the IP address we set here when we configured manually. 105. And it's, it's red. It's not pinging anymore. But if we change into the HP client, Ta-da! It's pingable again. So this is awesome. Actually, this is hardening the layer 2 security on the Cisco switching environment. So both the HP snooping and dynamic ARP inspection is really, really good thing to have. So try to implement that, but don't forget, if you reboot the switch, that's a bonus information because I've seen the guy drop the entire subnet because he didn't know how this worked. He rebooted the switch and the computer didn't get the IP address again. You know how Windows sometimes saves the IP address when you unplug and plug. Windows has this st still the same IP address. Didn't request the uh, new IP address. Didn't renew the IP address. In that case, this table is empty because you restarted the switch, but the Windows still has the old IP address. So those packets coming from those the, these kind of Windows will be dropped. So what you need to do is renew the IP address. Let's say. Do something like this on the Windows IP config renew, and this will force Windows to reget to get again the IP address. Well, probably it's gonna be the same IP address because that's how DHP works. But even if it's the new IP address, you don't care. It still be in the switch DHP snooping binding table, and dynamic architecture won't block it anymore. Now, don't forget to enable trust on the interface, because if you don't trust, then your gateway, which in my case is dot one, will be manually configured IP. It is already manually configured IP, right? Why would you have DHP client on the next hop interface, such as gateway or the firewall? So for the switch, this is manually configured IP address, and if you don't enable trust on that interface, switch will drop these packets coming from the gateway of the switch, like from the firewall, for example. So you need to enable that. And this is it. This is how you enable dynamic ARP inspection. Now, some of the commands you can use to troubleshoot is, for example, show IP ARP inspection interfaces. This is a pretty awesome command. It tells you which interface is trusted, if it, if it is or not. Then there is a show IP ARP inspection, VLAN 1, for example. Uh, enable, uh, so dynamic ARP inspection is enabled on VLAN 1, configured, and it's actually operational. 
and then there is a show IPR inspection without everything. You see how many packets were dropped from VLAD1, how many forwarded, DHP drops, and so on. And then you also have show IP DHP snooping uh, binding, which you already knew probably if you watched my previous video, and just a snooping, which you know gives the information which interface is trusted. There are many other commands, but these are the major commands, like main commands you want to use during the troubleshooting. Let's save this information and uh, I'll see you in the next video.